this is David from David Mize Music and today I'm going to do a tutorial on looping with virtual instruments. In Reaper we'll be using uh, Melda Productions M Super Looper looping plugin and a few virtual instruments. Now the reason I did this was because I've seen people doing looping and inevitably they're always using a real instrument, mostly a guitar and then possibly some voice, but I wanted to do this in a way that could use several virtual instruments on different tracks of the looper and do it all within this environment so that we basically only needed one instrument to uh, do as many different sounds and uh, arrangements as we wanted to. I will warn you ahead of time, I'm not a professional, so this video will not be a professional video. As a matter of fact, at any moment a cat might come in and insinuate themselves into the audio at least with a uh, plea for food, but I will ignore that and move on. So, that being said, uh, we'll start with part one and that is setup. Now there are two parts to setup. There is Reaper itself and then the Super Looper plugin. So we'll do these one at a time and we'll start with Reaper. Now you'll notice that I have a voiceover channel here. That is so that I can talk without triggering the looper. And of course when you're setting up this is a channel you wouldn't need so you can just disregard it altogether. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the looper channel. And it's as easy as just double clicking and creating a new channel. We'll call it Looper. Uh, we don't have to do anything different with the routing, but we do have to actually add the plugin. So what we're looking for here is Super Looper by Melder Production. Now I'm not going to go with uh, any of the multiple outputs. I'm just going to use the plain old plugin. And there it is. And for now, that's all we need to do with it. So put it away. We will spend quite a bit of time with it in the next part. But for now, that's all we need. Now, we need to add a channel for a MIDI controller. Uh, I'm assuming that if you're a keyboard player, as I am, that you really don't have the time or um, wherewithal to be moving a mouse around and clicking things to change instruments and to start and stop loops and things like that. So you're going to want a MIDI controller. Uh, I'm using a StageRite SRP200. Uh, it has sliders, uh, buttons, knobs. Mostly what we're interested in are the 16 pads that it has because that's how we're going to be controlling things. So I want to create another channel and this one we're going to call MIDI controller. Now it is important when you set up the MIDI controller that you route MIDI exclusively from the MIDI controller. And the reason you want to do this is if you leave this at MIDI all channels uh, then later on when you have instruments selected and armed when you hit the pads on your controller the corresponding notes will play on the instrument and that could be interesting but for uh, right now it would be pretty much just annoying so we don't want to do that what we do want to do however is route the MIDI controller to the looper channel and there are many ways to do that in Reaper but with this particular theme I'm using I'm just going to come down here grab that move it over there we don't need any audio but we do want our MIDI all of it to go to the looper that way we can control it later on. All right, so now that being done, the next thing we want to do is add our instrument channels. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use three instruments. You can use as many as you want, as many as you can control, but just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to add three instruments. I'm going to add a synth lead, uh, a piano, and a bass. Now we will get drums into the mix, but that will be later on in the looper setup, so we won't worry about that right now. So we're going to insert some virtual instruments here, and the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that so I can see everything. Here's the one I think I'm going to do for our lead, and I don't want a pad. That doesn't seem very interesting. What I do want is a soft lead and this little guy here called crunched glass and I'll give you just a little there you go so that's going to be our lead now 
Next, we're going to do a piano because everything's better with piano. At least that's what I was taught in college. And I like addictive keys. I have uh, used it for a long time. I like this close mix. It is a nice sound. And so now we've got a piano. And there we go. And then finally we're going to add a bass. Now I like the Ample plugins. They are wonderful. This is P Lite, which is free. Uh, it is strictly a four string. You won't be able to play anything below E, but it has a great sound and it has an even greater price, uh, that being free. And so we'll use this guy. And all right, so now we've got our instruments set up. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move this voiceover track down to the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to be setting up our controller to control these instrument tracks and it does it by number and I already have mine set up so I don't want to skew my numbers by doing that. Alright uh, now again on your instruments you want to use the same kind of reasoning that you did with the controller which is you only want a specific MIDI input that being your keyboard or whatever else you're playing I'm playing through my focus right so I'll take all channels there again the reason you're doing that is because if you don't when you start to play you will uh, trigger things on the pad controller and again still the pad controller will trigger notes so we want to avoid that because again it could be interesting but I'm not much in the mood for interesting right now so what we will do is limit that uh, there we go alright so now having set that up we need to find a way to make the MIDI controller control these tracks and you'll find out why later because what we're doing is uh, controlling the tracks uh, with and, uh, and the corresponding tracks in Superlooper with our controller. So the way that we're going to do that is find a track here, go to Actions, Show Action List, and then just type in the track. Now this is track four, so I'm going to type in track, I'm sorry, let me move up one here because I want to start with this one. So let me close that and go back. This is track three. So we'll go to Actions, Show Action List, and I'll type in Track 3. Now you'll see this is the one you want. Select Track 3. Now you'll see I already have a uh, note assigned to it on my controller. You will not, so what you will want to do is click Add, and then a window will come up, which is basically a learning window. Uh, tap the appropriate pad on your controller, and it will assign it to select that track. Now remember the pads that you're using because you're going to likewise uh, assign them in Looper in a little while here. I would suggest a, sort of a written map of some sort uh, just for the time being until you really get used to it. Alright so once you've done uh, track 3 you can do the same thing with track 4 so on and so forth for however many tracks you choose to enter. Uh, again, select track 4 and then hit add and hit the appropriate pad on your controller. Now, one more thing that we need to do because we want these tracks to be uh, armed when they're selected. And so the way you do that is you right click the record button on the track and you select automatic record arm when selected. And you do that for all three of your instrument tracks. So when you do that, basically you'll notice here that anytime you select the track, it is armed and ready to play. And that's what we want because we want it to play into the looper. Uh, so if you've done this correctly, you should then be able to tap the pads on your controller and move back and forth through your instrument channels. And as you'll notice, each time you do, 
It's armed to record and play into the looper. Again, you'll see why this is important when we do our super looper setup. So if you've done all that and everything is good to go, then you're ready for part two of our initial setup, and that's super looper. We'll see you there.